In this video, we will discuss survey queries. If you'd like to follow on this video, please open the file 0408 surveyqueries.dwg located in the training folder as discussed in the Working With This Dataset video. A survey query allows you to search a survey database's points and figures that meet a specified series of conditions. A survey query is associated with and saved in a survey database. However, you also have the ability to save a query to an external file as well as import a query from an external file. A survey query can only query the points and figures within the current survey database. So let's open up the Proj1 survey database that we created from the previous exercise. We'll right click and select Open for Edit. Notice the collection for survey queries. As with anything in the survey tool space, you simply right click on it to access any of the functionalities contained within the shortcut menu. Notice the options to select New, Open from File, import, export, and so on. Let's go ahead and create a new survey query. This opens up the survey query builder. This is a palette and contains palette functionality. You can even right click on the title bar here and anchor it left to right, very similar to any of the palette functionalities that you see in AutoCAD. Let's say we want to create a survey query that will contain the boundary points as well as toe slope and bottom slope figures that we may want to add to a surface later on. We'll go ahead and give that name and we'll call it boundary points and TS for toe of slope and BS for bottom of slope. Note the option to give it a description as well. So first looking at the points category, what we want to do is look at the properties column here. If you select the drop down here, you will notice you can start out with none or all or by a query, which is a really great way to filter in or out different points. We'll go ahead and just leave it on by query and notice the option for select a property. We'll go ahead and click on that and you can define a property that you want to query. In this case, we want to use the description. As soon as you do that, notice how some other fields update in the palette automatically. You are then able to select an operator that will allow you to define what property you want to add to the query. In this case, we want the starts with operator. Since the description key for the points is BNDY, then that's what we're going to type in here. Note the option to add additional querying to the different point queries if you wanted to. For now, we'll just leave it with this one query. In the figures query area, we want to leave it set to by query and we'll simply click on the property and for the property here, we want the name of the figures. In this case, the names contain TS and BS. So we want to leave it on contains, but notice how you can select any of the other operators and we want to click in the field here and type in TS. We also want to add figures that contain the description BS. So I'll go ahead and click on this drop down because we don't want it to be and because that will only allow a figure query that will have both of these. In this case, we want it to be an or because that will allow it to be either one. We'll go ahead and select the property of name, contains, and we'll say BS. There are some other sorting criteria that you can define. What we'll do here is we'll click on the preview and drawing button first. As you can see, these objects are not in the file. They're simply there as a preview. If I go to select them, nothing gets selected. What you'll also notice is this little option right here. If I hover over this, I can click on this to dismiss the survey query preview graphics. If I click on that, they disappear. Again, they are not really in the file. It was simply a preview. Let's go ahead and hover into our palette again and notice the option to save the query within the database. If I were to exit out and not save it, you would be prompted to save the query or not. Notice the option to display the query in an editor. This is a very cool functionality as it allows you to build a query real quickly and then edit any part of those points or figures that you want to. We'll click on Save Query. And just for the heck of it, to make sure we have a backup, we'll click on Save File. And we'll give this the same exact name. Notice the extension of .qml. This would be the file that you could import into another survey database if you wanted to. What's really great about this functionality is you could have an entire folder full of queries that you would use in other databases and you could then import those queries into those databases. I'll go ahead and close the Survey Query Builder palette. Now I actually want to bring that query into the drawing. Again, when in doubt, right click on it and now I can insert this into the drawing. Notice the option to save the query to a file as well as the option to edit the query right afterwards. I'll click Insert into Drawing and there are the points and the figures actually in the current file. What's also really cool about this functionality, you'll notice in the ribbon, there's a survey query contextual ribbon. As soon as you run a query, 
Many of the options available in the Survey Tool Space are available in the Contextual Ribbon. You can preview in the drawing, you can open the file, you can even insert, remove, etc., as well as select them in the drawing as well. One of the other great features of querying objects within a survey database is to actually add them to a surface. If I click on Add to Surface here, you'll notice I can actually toggle this on and type in a surface here to add the objects to that surface just within that query. That's a really great functionality. Notice the option to insert the queries from the objects in the drawing or reference them right from the survey database as a dynamic query result, which means if anything in the survey database actually changes, the surface will update as well. Really cool stuff. This concludes this video on survey queries.